a hearty welcome to all of you from Paro, India. We are starting the fourth chapter in the earlier cities. In the previous chapters, we have seen that in the prehistoric period, there was Paleolithic age, Neolithic age, then came the early smaller villages. Over the years, some of the smaller villages grew into larger ones. The number of people living in them increased. New needs arose and new occupations were started. People in those villages were prosperous because they were now producing more food than they required for their needs. So they could exchange the surplus food for other things such as cloths, pottery or ornaments. Now, it was no longer necessary for every family to work in the fields and produce its own food. Those who were weavers, potters or carpenters exchanged the articles which they produced for food grown by other families. Gradually, as trade increased, the craftsmen began to live together in such villages grew into towns. The beginnings of city life introduced an advance in technology and a higher degree of civilization. Civilization is that stage of human development when he or she looks for more than just the satisfaction of his material needs. He has enough food so that he can live in cities, trades is produced with others, has leisure to think and to seek answers to the questions which puzzle him about life. He has knowledge of writing so that he can record his thoughts. His community is governed by laws. Man is civilized when he attempts to satisfy the needs of his mind. The story of Harappa. This was one of the oldest cities in the subcontinent. On the banks of river Ravi, which is a tributary of river Indus. It was the first city to be discovered and all other sites from where similar buildings and all other things were found were described as Harappan. These cities developed about 4700 years ago and the culture that developed was known as Harappa culture. The Harappa culture grew and developed in India at the same time as other civilizations in other parts of Asia and Africa mainly in the valleys of river Nile, Euphrates, Tigris and Mangho. In Egypt, there was the civilization of the pharaoh who built the pyramids at this time. In the region called Iraq, there was the Sumerian civilization and the Harappan people had trading contacts with the people of Sumer. These cities were found in the Punjab and Sindh in Pakistan and in Gujarat, Rajasthan, Haryana and Punjab in India. Archaeologists have found a set of unique objects in almost all these cities. Red painted pottery with designs in black, stone weights, steel, special beads, copper tools and parallel sided long stone blades. So, in India, they were concentrated only in the northern and the western parts, initially. What was special about these cities? Many of these were divided into two or more parts. Usually the part to the west was smaller but higher and was called citadel. Generally the part to the east was larger but lower and was called the lower town. Very often walls of baked brick were built around each part. The bricks were baked so well that they lasted for thousands of years. They were laid down in an interlocking pattern that made the walls stronger. Also, if lower town would have been attacked or flooded, then the inhabitants of the lower town would have found refuge in the citadel. In some cities, special buildings were constructed on the citadel. For example, in Mohenjo-daro, a very special tank which archaeologists call the Great Bath was built in this area. It was lined with bricks, coated with plaster and made watertight with a layer of natural tar. There were steps leading down to it from two sides while there were rooms on all sides. Water was probably brought in from a well and drained out after use. Perhaps important people took a dip in this tank on special occasions. Other cities such as Kalibangan in present-day Rajasthan 
and Lothal in present day Gujarat had fire altars where sacrifices may have been performed. And some cities like Mohenjo-daro, Harappa and Lothal had elaborate storehouses. Also there were some more findings by the archaeologists like the circular platform for threshing grain. Threshing grain means removing the edible part of the grain or the crop from the husk or the straw to which it is attached. Also there were bronze crucibles. Crucible is simply a container which may have been used for storing food grains or other important articles. This is the map given in the NCRT which talks about the earlier cities in the subcontinent. You can see Harappa being located on the banks of river Ravi. This is Rakhigari, Kalibangan, Ganveriwala, Mohanjodaro on the banks of Indus River, Sotkako, Chanhudaro, Dholavira, Surkatada and Lothal. You can also add one more site named Rupar which is in present day Chandigarh. Now we move on to the next page. Please have a look at the picture given in the next page which shows the great path in Mohenjo-daro. Houses, drains and streets. Generally, houses were either one or two stories high with rooms built around a courtyard. Most houses had a separate bathing area and some had wells to supply water. Many of these cities had covered drains. You can see how carefully these were laid out in straight lines. Each drain had a gentle slope so that water could flow through it. Drains in houses were connected to those on the streets and smaller drains to the bigger ones. Drains were covered so inspection holes were provided at intervals to clean them. All the three houses, drains and streets were probably planned and built at the same time. Life in the city. A Harappan city was a very busy place. There were people who planned the construction of special buildings in the city called the rulers. They sent people to distant lands to get metal, precious stones and other raw materials. They may have kept most valuable objects such as ornaments of gold and silver or beautiful beads for themselves. And there were scribes People who knew how to write, who helped prepare the seals and perhaps wrote on other materials that may have not survived. Besides, there were men and women, craftspersons making all kinds of things either in their own homes or in special workshops. People were traveling to distant lands or returning with raw materials and perhaps some beautiful stories. Many terracotta toys have also been found. Children must have played with them. You can see this is the picture of a street in Mohenjo-daro with a drain. And this is the picture of a well. This is the picture of a Harappan seal. The signs on the top of the seal are part of a script which is the earliest form of writing known in the subcontinent. Scholars have tried to read these signs but we still do not know what exactly do they mean. And this is the picture of terracotta toys. New crafts in the city. Most of the things that have been found by archaeologists are made of stone, shell and metal including copper, bronze, gold and silver. Copper and bronze were used to make tools, weapons, ornaments and vessels. Gold and silver were used to make ornaments and vessels. Perhaps the most striking findings are those of beads, weights and blades. You can see in this picture showing the stone weights. How precisely these weights have been shaped. These are made of chert which is a kind of sedimentary stone. I have already talked about this stone in my second chapter. These were probably used to weigh precious stones or metal. In the right, we have beads. Many of these were made out of carnelian, which is a beautiful red stone. The stone was cut, shaped, polished and finally a hole was bored through. 
the center so that a string could be passed through. And the far right we have the stone blade. The Harappan also made seals out of stone. These were generally rectangular and usually had an animal carved on them. The Harappans also made pots with beautiful flag design. Cotton was probably grown at Mehargarh from about 7000 years ago. Actual pieces of cloth were found attached to the lid of a silver vase and some copper objects at Mohenjo-daro. Please have a look at this picture. A stone statue of an important man found from Mohenjo-daro which shows him wearing an embroidered gun. Archaeologists have also found spindle walls made of terracotta and faience. These were used to spin thread. What is a faience? Unlike stone or shell that are found naturally, it is a material that is artificially produced. A gum was used to shape sand or powdered quartz into an object. These objects were then placed, resulting in a shiny, glassy surface. The colors were usually blue or sea green as shown in the picture. It was used to make beads, bangles, earrings and tiny vests. Many of the things that were produced were probably the work of specialists. A specialist is a person who is trained to do only one kind of work. But not everybody could have been a specialist. We do not know whether only men were specialists or only women were specialists. Perhaps some women and men may have been specialists. In search of raw materials, these are substances that are either found naturally, such as wood or metal ores, or produced by farmers or herders. These are then processed to produce finished goods. Raw materials that the Harappans used were available locally, but many items such as copper, tin, gold, silver and precious stones had to be brought from distant places. Harappans probably got copper from present-day Rajasthan and Oman. Tin, which was mixed with copper to produce bronze, may have been brought from present-day Afghanistan and Iran. Gold from Karnataka and precious stones from Gujarat, Iran and Afghanistan. Please look at the picture. It shows a toy. And this picture shows a seal. Food for people in the city. While many people lived in the city, others living in the countryside grew crops and reared animals. These farmers and herders supplied food to craftspersons, scribes, and rulers in the cities. We know from remains of plants that the Harappans grew wheat, barley, pulses, peas, rice. Sesame, linseed, and mustard. They also have used banana and pomegranate. A new tool, the plow, was used to dig the earth for turning the soil and planting the seed. The real plows, which were probably made of wood, have not survived. Toy models have been found, like this. Today, in many farming communities, only men use the plow. We do not know whether Harappans followed such customs or not. As the region did not receive heavy rainfall, some form of irrigation may have been used. This means that water was stored and supplied to the fields when the plants were growing. The Harappans reared cattle, sheep, goat and buffalo. Water and pastures were available around settlements. However, in the dry summer months, Large herds of animals were probably taken to greater distances in search of grass and water. They also collected fruits like bear and caught fish and hunted wild animals like the antelope. A closer look Harappan towns in Gujarat. There were two Harappan towns in Gujarat, namely Dholavira and Lothal. Dholavira was located on Khadir Bay in the run of Kutch where there was fresh water and fertile soil. It was divided into three parts unlike the other Harappan cities and each part was surrounded with massive stone walls and entrances through gateways. 
Another important fact about Dhola Veera is that it was the largest IVC site in India. IVC means Indus Valley Civilization Site in India. There was a large open area in the settlement where public ceremonies could be held. Other finds include large letters of the Harappan script that were carved out of white stone and perhaps inlaid in wood. This is a unique finding as generally Harappan writing has been found on small objects such as seals. The city of Lothal stood beside a tributary of Sabarmati in Gujarat close to the Gulf of Hamburg. It was situated near areas where raw materials such as semi-precious stones were easily available. This was an important center for making objects out of stone, shell and metal. There was also a storehouse in the city. Many seals and ceilings were found in the storehouse. This is the picture of a dockyard at Lothal. This huge tank may have been a dockyard where boats and ships came in from the sea and through the river channel. Goods were probably loaded and unloaded here. A building that was found in Lothal was probably a workshop for making beads. Pieces of stone, half-made beads, tools for bead making and finished beads have all been found here. Now we come to seals and ceilings. Seals may have been used to stamp bags or packets containing goods that were sent from one place to another. After a bag was closed or tied, a layer of wet clay was applied on the knot and the seal was pressed on it. The impression of the seal is known as a sealing. If the ceiling was intact, one could be sure that the goods had arrived safely. The mystery of the end. Around 3900 years ago, we find the beginning of a major change. People stopped living in many of the cities. Writing, seals and dates were no longer used. Raw materials brought from longer distances became rare. In Mohenjo-daro, we find garbage piled up on the streets. Drainage system broke down and new, less impressive houses were built even over the streets. Some scholars suggest that the rivers dried up. Others suggest that there was deforestation because fuel was required for baking bricks and for smelting copper ores. Also, grazing by large herds of cattle, sheep and goat may have destroyed the green cover. In some areas, there were floods. But none of the reasons could explain the end of all the cities. Flooding or drying of a river would have had an effect only in some areas. Some scholars also feel that the cities may have been attacked by enemies. It appears as if the rulers lost control. In any case, the effects of the changes are quite clear. Sites in Sindh and West Punjab, which are in present-day Pakistan, were abandoned, while many people moved into newer, smaller settlements to the east and the south. New cities emerged about 1400 years later. Most of Egypt is a dry desert, except for lands along the river Nile. Around 5000 years ago, kings ruled over Egypt. These kings sent armies to distant lands to get gold, silver, ivory, timber and precious stones. They also built huge tombs known as pyramids. When they died, bodies of kings were preserved and buried in these pyramids. These carefully preserved bodies were known as mummy. A large number of objects were also buried with them. These included food and drink, cloth, ornaments, utensils, musical instruments, weapons and animals. Sometimes even serving men and women were buried with the rulers. These are amongst the most elaborate burials in the world history. So, it seems that they also believed in life after death. These are some important dates. Cotton cultivation at Mehargarh about 7000 years ago. Beginning of cities about 4700 years ago, beginning of end of cities about 3900 years ago, and emergence of other cities about 2500 years ago.
so this brings us to the end of this chapter thank you so much please share like and subscribe the channel and do join us for the next video